hey guys welcome to our another video for java for testers so welcome to my new website ministryofautomation.com so this is a website specifically created for automation folks where you can find all automation related courses discussions and job openings or if you are facing any technical issues you know we'll try to help you each other on this platform so do visit and let me know if you have any suggestions i'm still working to improve this new website ministryofautomation.com so once again welcome to all of you who are listening my courses right from the beginning which are dedicated to software automation you know which is the future of testing and in this course we're gonna discuss about for loop so we started discussing about loops in uh, two three videos back from here i would say we discussed about do while loop we discussed about while loop and now a very important for loop so let's see what is special about for loop the very thing very important thing about for loop is it's very very important in software automation to understand what is for loop how it works when to implement okay so that's why please pay a special attention and do a lot of practice around for loop okay because i'm pretty much sure that in almost every automation script uh, the probability of using for loop is very very high okay and also in most of interview questions you may want to answer the interview questions using for loops because most of the interviews you know will be around uh, multiple things how you will deal them you know so on those scenarios you may want to implement the for loop so let's see what all type of for loops are available in java yes i said types of for loop the reason because now latest if you ask me today in 2019 uh, there are different type of for loops which you can use so if you go like five years six years back so maybe there is only one kind of for loop in java which people were using it but now you have a different type of for loop so there are two types of main for loops which you can use the one is a normal for loop you know basic traditional for loop which you're gonna learn it today and the one is enhanced for loop okay so don't worry about enhanced for loop as of now uh, i think you can still implement everything in normal for loop you no need to worry about enhanced for loop but just for information purpose you should know that there is an enhanced for loop and we will learn that as well okay so how for loop works so my methodology of teaching and you know uh, my methodology of learning anything in uh, anything in scripting or anything in automation is first i try to understand syntax because that's the foremost important thing for any any person to learn coding and then once you know syntax once you know how the syntax works then it you know you can implement the way you want so first try to understand how syntax of a for loop works so this is the syntax of a for loop so if you see you write for and then in the bracket you write three important thing one is initialization condition and increment decrement now you'll ask me sort of what is initialization what is condition increment decrement so don't worry we'll discuss it in for example initializing a counter okay uh, so and then checking for a particular condition and then going and incrementing that particular counter so counter in the sense so let's say you are you know, uh, counting people from 1 to 100 so uh, you start from 1 and then you go increment it right so first person second person third person and so on so in a similar fashion in a for loop you initialize something from where you gonna start forward okay or you initialize something from where you wanna start backward so that is a counter and then you check for a specific condition and then go increment and decrement okay so first let's try to understand a syntax the first step is initialization happens first and only one time this we need to understand which means that the initialization initialization part for the for loop only executes once so one which is highlighted in red color that gets executed only once because you initialize the counter only once and then the rest of the thing starts executing second step the condition so you see the second whatever sequence i am trying to explain you in the same color i try to highlight it so in a second step which is a condition the condition in a for loop is evaluated on each iteration okay if the condition is true then the statement inside for loop body gets executed once the condition returns false this condition if it returns false you know the statement in the for loop does not execute it doesn't enter here the control doesn't enter inside a for loop to execute those statement one statement two 
and the control gets transferred to the next statement in the program after a for loop. So basically, it comes out of this. Okay, so this you need to understand. Third step: after every execution for the for loop body means once it initialized, check the condition. Condition is true. It came here. It executed statement one, statement two. Now what? Will it exit? No. Then it again go back and <clears throat> check for the uh, condition. But before it again execute a for loop, it increments the counter. So that's our third step. So after executing a first iteration, the body control goes to increment or a decrement part of a loop, and then it continues the continues the execution. After four step, again it goes to Control jumps to a second step, and the condition is reevaluated. So this is how the for loop works. So let me give a practical example. So let's say you have hundred cars in front of you, hundred vehicle, okay, and someone asks you uh, to to count them and let me know only the Toyota brand, okay. So now how you will do it? So if you have hundred cars, what you will do is what is your condition condition is if the vehicle is vehicles brand is toyota or not right so that's your condition so first you will start your counter from zero and you will check for the first car and you will see oh this looks like a toyota camry okay so you evaluated your condition the condition is true and then you incremented a counter and it you went to a next car and similarly so this is how you will evaluate your condition increment a counter and then go to a next iteration so let's once again simply once again uh, see how it works the syntax so this is syntax for so this is our syntax and here the declaration happens here we are declaring the counter i equal to 0 this is the condition and this is the increment and decrement and inside a for loop we can write whatever number of statements we want okay so these are basically a list of statements so same the control comes here initialize goes here check for a condition if the condition is true come inside execute whatever number of statements are there inside a for loop and then go back increment or decrement the counter again check for a condition and then re-enter okay this is how the for loop works now let's go and do some coding so let's create a new class for us new class and name it as for loop I need public static void main. Fine. Now inside this, let me say for this is a syntax, right? Int i equal to zero. You can initialize i equal to ten, i equal to twenty, whatever. Okay, but this is the standard practice of you know initializing a counter with zero. If you are initializing it with hundred, you may want to decrement. You know, by 99, 98 till it reaches 100, uh, till it reaches 0, or whatever. And then condition. So what condition I want to check? So let's say I want to check till i less than 5. This is my condition. And then i plus plus. So i plus plus is nothing but i equal to i plus 1. Okay. I can also write like this. So if you are getting confused, what is i? You can also write like this. This is also pretty easy, right? So but instead of saying i equal to i plus 1, I'm just saying I plus plus, which is basically the same thing. Now this is my for loop syntax, and now see so just to print it. Now here I'm saying printing the value of I. So I'm just you can you can do anything over here. I'm just printing the value of I so that you will come to know. You know the value of i in every iteration, and that's it. I'm not doing anything here. This is a very simple basic for loop. Now, let me execute this. Let me clear the console, right click, run as Java application. Now, you see it started executing when the value of i was zero. So, it you know first assigned zero value to i, which is an integer. And then it checked whether i less than 5 yes it is then it entered inside and printed the value of i which is 0 then it <coughs> incremented it and then again check the condition then it again true till when the i equal to 4 so when it printed i equal to 4 again it went 
for incrementing the i now the i's value is 5 now i is not less than 5 right that's why it didn't enter it again and then it exited the loop so if you want to you know uh, check when uh, it exits and what it prints Oops, sorry so i'll say here outside save now here what i'll do is so instead of uh, i is equal to 5 let's try something weird okay so i less than equal to let's see now till what point it prints okay so again i am executing oh see now because we gave less than equal to now it also printed when the i value was 5 right because in the last iteration when the value was 4 it incremented it to 5 then it checked the condition 5 obviously the i's value was less than 5 so it didn't enter it but now because we gave less than equal to now it also entered for the fifth time right and then it printed it and then it came outside the for loop and printed this statement which says outside for loop now inside for loop you can do anything you know you can write if statement or uh, you can write uh, whatever but just wanted you to understand the how the for loop works okay so now if you try to do it like this now let's see will it work nope why because it is a syntax issue just hover your mouse here and say see, see it's it's not <clears throat> because it's a equal to assignment you know it what it's trying to do is it's trying to assign phi value to i so this is not correct equal to less than you have to give less than equal to this is fine okay so this small small thing sometimes you know uh, may be very pretty obvious for for people who are already working on it but i remember uh, there are some people who start from very basic so don't be shy if you are facing or don't get you know don't get disappointed if you face such kind of issues that's pretty obvious don't worry mostly the syntax related issues you know that you can overcome only by doing a lot of practice so do a lot of practice for every class and do some practice pause the video listen it again and uh, you know, if you're facing any issues drop me an email i i almost every day i try to answer uh, uh, four five emails i'm getting a lot of emails nowadays thanks for all of you guys who are watching this and uh, i try my best to reply them and uh, yeah do practice thank you see you in your next video